how to set up thinkorswim for day trading that's what we're going to go through today setting up the charts the studies the indicators just how i have mine set up on the live stream is how we're going to set it up today so if you're using td ameritrade day trading low flow small cap stocks or any stocks for that matter i believe i have a pretty clean setup so let's get right to it Here's the Thinkorswim right here. I just got to sign in using my username and password. We are logged into Thinkorswim. This video is going to be pretty quick. I'm going to be running through a lot of stuff. We're not going to pay attention to a lot of stuff, but this is the home screen here. We're not going to pay attention to the monitor tab, the trade tab, the analyze scan, uh, market watch. We're going to go straight to the charts. Click on charts. Boom. How to set up Thinkorswim for day trading. What do you need when you day trade each and every day? You need probably a place to place orders to buy and sell. You probably would want to have some charts. You probably want to have the level two time and sales. So we're going to be setting all that up today. The first thing I like to do is click on this little arrow here and shrink that. It pulls that over on the side. So we have one big black blank screen. But how will I fit numerous charts in level two, time and sales, and that sort of stuff up in here? I can't just do it on one big blank screen. I'm going to have to click on flexible grid. Boom. So this is going to be how I have mine set up. You may want to adjust yours different a little bit later on, but if you follow along with me, you're going to have a clean, clean setup. So as soon as I clicked on flexible grid, we have five charts here. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. But I want to have more, more than that. I want to have a little bit more because I like to have three charts, the one minute chart, five minute chart, the 15 minute chart, and a few other things. So how can I add more? I'll come right up here to show grid actions, click on that, and click this customize grid thing. Click customize grid, there we go. It brings this up here. The first thing I'm gonna do is get everything kind of lined out how I like to have it. So I'm gonna click this plus arrow to the right, boom. So I like to have that and then I want to click it one more time this right one plus arrow to the right it probably won't make sense right now but it will at the end so click over to the right there we go now we have six charts right here but that's not all we need to come back over to the middle one click the plus to the down boom right there perfect 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 and then on the bottom we're gonna have to click one two this one over here in the right hand corner we'll click this one to the right and now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is how I like to have it. So now let's move on to the next thing. How can we need to be able to link all these together? If we have a level two time and sales and some charts, when we click on a chart, we want to make sure the level two is matched up and the time and sales and your order is matched up to the same thing. So let's just put a generic uh, stock in here for now, or let's put the SPY in here. Let's put the SPY SPY. Click on that spy. So now the spy chart came up. The spy's in there. But the spy didn't come up in any of these other ones because the charts ain't linked. How are we going to link it? We're going to click right here, symbol link. Come on down. What color do you want to use? I'm going to use orange just for demonstration. Orange, you can have it any color you want though. So there we go. I need to make all these orange. Here's another orange. So orange, look, when I clicked out on orange, the spy came up right there also. So I'm going to link them all together. I think you understand what's going on right there. So let's see how fast. Orange. 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 There we go. We did it. We did it. We got it all set up. We're going to reorganize uh, everything a little bit later, but... There we go. We basically kind of got it how we set up how we want it. But I like to have the one minute chart, the five minute chart, the 15 minute chart. I like to have the one minute chart down here. How do I switch this to the one minute chart? It's on the daily chart right now. See that D? That means daily. You click on time frame setup and look right here. It has different time frames. One day, one minute, five day, five minute, five day, 15 minute. You get the picture. I like this as my one day, one minute. Click on that. So now it's the one minute chart. I like to have this one up here as my five minutes. So I'll switch that to the five minute, five day, five minute. There we go. It's on five day, five minute. This one I like to have on the 15 minute chart. So I'm going to switch that to the 15 minute chart. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. You see this little uh, on the sidebar right here? It's on C right now. That means chart. And this is level two, new. So you can kind of see what that is. That's the chart. 
but I want this as the level two, but it doesn't have the sidebar. I think because the chart's too small. So how can I switch this one if I want this to level two? I click right here, click, boom, come down to gadget. And look, you see gadget, you scroll over here, has live news, it's clicked on chart right now. I want this to level two, so I'll click on level two, boom. So now that's the level two. It's the spy level two. Anytime I switch any of these over to any other ticker, the level two, whatever, it's going to move with it. Everything will move with it. What do I want to make this one right here? I want to make this one the time and sales. You'll understand later, but I'll click on time and sales. Boom. Click time and sales. Now it's the time and sales. But it's also the chart. I don't want the chart, so I'll unclick the chart. You just click it again and it unclicks the chart. Now it's the time and sales. It's black because it's the weekend, no order flows going through. Now I need a place to uh, buy and sell and take my orders, buy and sell my orders. So I'm going to put that right here and I'll click that. That's the active trader. So I'll make that the active trader. But again, my chart is up there. I need to unclick the chart. Boom. So here we go. We're getting clean set up. Why are these over here? It's going to make sense later, but I do not use these. It's just I put them up there. I have to have that space and you'll understand a little bit later. So now let's reorganize these things. Let's reorganize them. I like to have the one minute chart bigger than that. So I come down here in the one minute chart area. I come over here and you go over there till the arrows point in both directions. Left click and drag it on over. I dragged it on over right there. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll do the same thing with this. Boom, up here on the five minute chart. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. I'll stretch out the time and sales a little bit. I'll stretch this out a little bit more. Boom, boom, and the trader a little bit more. Okay, and now I have it. The one minute chart, the five minute chart, the 15 minute chart, the level two, the time and sales, and my order. And over here, I like to have my watch list, but there is no gadget to have my watch list. So how can I get a watch list over here? I'll tell you, you come right over here, you expand this back out, expand that, boom, see that? And over here, it has different gadgets. You can switch these gadgets around. You can make it all watch list. You can have live news, whatever. You click right here, see it says detach gadget, switch gadget, delete gadget, you can delete them. What I want over here is, uh, is my watch list. So here's my watch list right here. How can I get it over there? I click on this and I click detach gadget. So I detach the gadget. I drag it all the way over here. I drag it all the way over here and then I make it the right size. Boom. And I put it way down here. I drag it all the way down and there I go. But that's not all because if you click on this chart, it will go behind the screen. So you need to pin this. How you pin it, you click that always on top. And now look, this is basically, it's looking a whole lot better, but I still don't want this. So I'll shrink this back in. Boom. Now we have the one minute chart, the five minute chart, the 15 minute chart, the level two, the time and sales right here and my order window. So now I can buy and sell. I can see different charts. I have my watch list. Everything's looking good. Everything's looking good. So now I don't need to organize my grid anymore. See, this is how you organize your grid. You can add them and take them away. So I need to I need to take that out of there. How do I do that? I come back up here to the show grid actions and I unclick the customized grid. If you ever want to customize it again, you just come back up here and you customize it and you can click the customize again, but I'm going to uncheck it for now. Click and there it goes. It goes away. So here we go. Now we're back in action. So the next thing we're going to go through is basically the appearance of the charts. I really like to have a good, good appearance, kind of make it look like DOS Trader. So when I made this video, I tried to set all my settings back to default so we could run through this cleanly. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here, click on that, go to style, style, and then click on settings. So we're going to go through every single one of these, the general tab. Here's the general tab. Here's how I have mine set up. I have show orders, alerts, show alerts. I have show study. Some of this may just be the default. If, if some of it's not the default, this is how I have mine set up. I, there's your time zone. You put your time zone in there. Display. I show high, low bubble, show last price bubble clicked. And then I have show symbol logo, show trades I have clicked. 
and I have show price subgraph. And you can click this if you want to overlap the volume. What that will do is put your volume up here in the price section. I don't like to have it like that, so I have mine unclicked. Unclicked, unclicked, unclicked. Okay, so that's about it for that. Let's go to price axis. This way I have on the price axis. I believe pretty much all of this is default settings. Go through there and see if it is. It's pretty much default settings. So let's go to the time axis. The time axis, there's one very important thing on this. The reason this says five days, five minutes is because I'm changing the settings up here on the five day, five minute chart. If I would have done it down there, it would have been one day. So that doesn't really matter. What matters is this expansion area. You see how the chart up here is really, the candles are right next to the right edge right there. I don't like it way up there. It feels too squished up to me. So I like to make it five bars to the right. Five bars, five bars. So then I'll click apply, boom, and see how it moved it over right there. Now it gives me a little bit more space. You can make it 10 bars over, you can make it 20 bars over, but I think five bars is about right. It gives it a good, good look, gives you a little more breathing room, you know, it gives a little more breathing room, that sort of thing. So that's about it for that. I have all that clicked, everything's clicked like that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now we're gonna go to favorite time frames. On this, you can uh, switch around and, and change your time frames. Maybe you want this to be two days, one minute, instead of just one day, one minute. Some of these things you can switch around. You can switch around the time frames. That's good to do if you want to see different times. But anyways, there, there's mine right there, just basically the default settings. Boom, boom, boom. And here's another important one. Now, now we're on appearance, the candle appearance. So I have the red one already clicked to fill. See how it's filled up right there? I like them filled in. So let's click the green one and fill in the candles. So it's going to fill in those a candle as soon as I apply. I like to show the wicks of the candle. The wicks are those top wicks and down wicks. You guys know that. Another thing I like to do is see this background button. I like to click on this background. I like to make it black, 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 blacker. So click on that. See how it made it blacker right there. As soon as I click apply, it's going to apply it to all these settings. Another thing I forgot to tell you, see that grid right there? Let's unclick this grid. So if I unclick the grid, click apply, see how the grid went away right there? The grid, the grid I like to have the grid there so you can kind of judge where the price is during the day as it's going up and down. If you don't have the grid, it's a little bit sketchy. Where do you know you'd have to put your uh, daily support resistance line? So I just like to have that as grid right there. Boom, boom, boom. So grid, let's click apply, boom. So, so see that grid right there? That's pretty nice to have. The next thing I like to do, you see how washed out these candles are? They don't look really washed out, but they're kind of washed out. I like to change the color. So on the fill up, I'll click on this. You could just click this green, but that green's a little bit washed out. So I'll click on more. And then here we go. You can brighten it up. See, so as soon as I click on one of these, you can do the example is right there. So I want to get this as bright as possible. I like to get it super bright, super bright, probably about right there. So click OK. And now watch. As soon as I click apply, these candles will get greener. Apply. See how it brighten that up? That's so nice. So nice when you're day trading. So nice to have a bright chart to me. So let's do the same thing with red. I could just click that red, but let's go to more and let's try the red. See the sample, the sample. Let's get a really nice bright one. That one looks really nice and bright. Click OK. Click apply. Now look how bright that is. I kind of wanted a little bit brighter actually, to tell you the truth. Let's try a little bit brighter. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. What am I doing here? Right there. OK. Apply. Boom. I guess that, that looks okay like that. I see apply right there. Boom, boom, boom. So that's how you change the candles. We're going to save all this pretty soon. You see how this can down here, it's not the same color up there, but we're going to be able to switch it easier. We could go through all the settings down here and upgrade it too, but we're just not. One more thing I forgot to do. You see this. These are blue. These are the volume bars. I forgot. Let's go back into settings. Style. The settings, settings right here. And what did I do? The appearance. So here's the appearance. I like to have the volume bars the same color as the ticks. 
So let's do that. The volume pours apply. And now look, it turned it green right there, green and red. So I like to have it like that. Let's go to equity, see this. And I like to have this click show volume subgraph. So it has its own little graph down there. Another thing I forgot to say, so we're in the equity section. I like to show extended hours trading session and I like to highlight extended hours trading section. Look if I unclick this and click apply. See how it just turns it all black? Now I don't know where the pre-market hours are, pre-market and after hours. That's why I like to have this highlight extended hours trading session, click apply. So the gray is the pre-market and after hours. So anytime you see that gray, it's real easy to say, oh, we're in the pre-market, we're in the after hours. So there you go. So that's about everything I have right there. Let's click okay, boom. The next thing we're going to go through, the next thing we're going to go through is indicators. I can't really uh, do the indicators for you, but I'll do the ones I'm going to do because maybe you have different indicators and things like that. But we're going to go through our uh, studies, actually the study. So we're going to go through studies. Let's add a study. I like to go to edit studies myself. If you add a study, you can just look right there, but I go to edit studies. And here we go. So edit studies. What studies are we going to have? And studies is like the VWAP, the moving averages, maybe the RSI. I like to use the VWAP. I could just scroll down through this and find the VWAP, but I'm going to just type it right in. VWAP, there, boom. And then go add selected, boom, there it is. And you can click this little cogwheel and adjust it. So let's click the cogwheel. And, and if you, wait, let's go to apply. So I applied it, and now look at the VWAP. It has an upper band and lower band. I do not like the upper band and lower band. So how I fix that, I go to the cogwheel, I click it, and down here, I go to upper band, and I click the show plot, I take it out of there. I go to the lower band, I go to show plot, and take it out of there. Then I go back to the VWAP, the VWAP, you can change the color. I like to keep mine in purple. Then I click OK, apply, and now it's just the normal VWAP. An another moving average I like to have in there is the exponential moving average. So we might as well put that one in there just to show you. I'm just going to show you a couple. Well, let's do the RSI real quick. RSI, add selected. So the RSI, you can put in the same as the volume. You can move it up, click that little arrow, let's apply. So if you put it in the volume section, look where it is. This is the RSI down there. You can keep it down there in the volume. That's pretty nice to have. We can keep that in there, the RSI. Some people love the RSA. So let's go through the moving average. I like to use the exponential moving average. Let's click on that, add selected, boom. Right now it's on the 9 EMA. You can move these. See how this is in the price? What that means is the price is the chart section. The volume is the volume section down here. So if you want to move it, I could move the RSI up into uh, the price. L let's do that and I'll show you. Apply. Now my RSI is up there. I'm not going to have my RSI up there. So let's click it and move it back down. Where is the RSI? Keep moving the arrow down, down, down. There we go and apply. So now it moved it back down there. But let's go back to the nine EMA moving at exponential average. Let's click on the cog wheel and you can switch this. If you don't like the nine EMA, you can make it the 13 EMA. You can make it the 200 EMA. You can make it the 50, whatever you want. I'm just telling you, I'm using mine as the nine. You can change the color right here. So if you click on that, you can change the color if you don't like the 9 EMA as the blue or whatever you use. And you click OK, apply. Boom, boom, boom. Apply and click OK. There we go. Now our charts are looking good. But now I want these charts on every chart. I don't want it just there. I don't want to have to go through every chart. So how can I fix that? I'll click on this cogwheel. I'll click on this style. I'll save the style. I can save the style. We'll just put it as S1. Let's just put it as S1. Boom. And look, you can include pattern and study sets. So the study sets are the VWAP and the 9EMA. I might as well click that. Boom. Click that. Save it. And now it's saved. Now, if I ever want the candles to look like that, I ever, I just want that like that. So now I can come down here, right click on this, 
and then I can go to style. I can load style, and the one we just did was the S1. So S1, and now look. We'll switch that back to the one minute chart, and now the whole thing, the candle, the RSI, the VWAP, and the 9 EMA. So really beautiful, really nice to have it like that. The next thing we're going to go through is the order window. Just real quick, I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. So we have, we're getting everything pretty clean, pretty set up. Hopefully you guys are understanding this. So the order window, the active trader. See how this active trader is 10? I'm going to show you how to get your default setting how you want it. But let's click on this cogwheel. So the cogwheel, you can switch these. You can see how this has buy market, sell market down there. Buy market, sell market. You can also move by ask, by bid. You can switch these however you want. I like to switch my, one of mine to cancel all, add item over there, and then I'll just move it straight up. I'll move that right up by that cancel button. <clears throat> because if you have this cancel one, it brings up another window, asks you which order do you want to cancel. So I just like to cancel all. Oh, I'm usually not in more than one or two orders at a time. And I'll remove the cancel one and I'll keep the cancel all. I don't like to have the reverse one there either, so I'll remove that one. And you can adjust these however you want, however you feel comfortable. Maybe you buy on the ass, buy on the bid, that sort of thing, and click OK. Boom. So there we go. Now we have a beautiful little setup, buy market, sell market, cancel all, flatten. How do I know what, what is going to happen if I click down here in this wheel? Is it going to sell me at the market or is it going to sell me? What's it going to do? It depends on what your default is. Where do you find your default? You come up here to setup. You come up here to, wait, let me bring that down, setup. You go to application settings, and we're going to go through this, and I'll show you. So here's the account. This is my account. You can display all accounts, whatever. So let's go to orders. Here's the orders. Here's how I have mine set up. Maybe you want to set yours up different, but this is how I have mine set up. Positions. Here it is, the positions. You can check it out right there. And here's active trader. This is Active Trader down here. So let's click on this. Or wait, this is Active Trader. Yes. Well, on Active Trader, I like to have this set at zero. It says it will move the orders go through uh, quicker and cleaner and better. So I put that at zero. I just keep this at five seconds. And then I have both of these clicked. And there you go. And then we'll go down to System system real time no delay default and uh, disable that all that stuff just like that that's how i have it security never start up look and fill display i don't really change none of these other things so let's go to the next one notifications nothing i don't do nothing with this order defaults this is an important one the order defaults is your default orders for down here you see how my default quantity of orders is 10. So see how it's 10 down here? So I could switch this. If I if I traded with more shares, I could have that set to 1,000. I could set that to 2,000, 10,000, and it would update this. Let, let's just do it real quick. I'll show you 100. And the order quantity, if I clicked up and down, it tells me how much is it. And right now, it will just go up and down one. So I could do that as 100 also and watch. So we'll apply settings. Boom. See how it switched that to 100. Now when I click up and down, it goes up and down by 100. But I like to have mine down a lot lower. So let's go back to application setting, order defaults. I, I have mine at 10 right now, at 10 because I don't have a huge share size and I like my uh, order quantity increment in one, in one. Whoa, I, oh well, here we go. Let's get back in there. The order default 10, one, apply settings. So see how it went back to 10 and now when I scroll down, it's just one. So basically this is how I have all my settings. What if you wanted to save this in? And so when you open your thing every single day, you can have this whole platform set just like this. You go to uh, Setup, Application Settings, or Save Workspace. So you save your workspace as this. So if you save your workspace as this and you come in, anytime you want to just go to this workspace, how we have it set up, how we just went through everything today, you'll name it and you'll click Save. Boom, 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 and click OK. There we go. Now everything's saved. Everything's perfect. You can also save your study sets. You can save your chart settings. 
you can save three different places. So if you didn't want to save this whole workspace, you could also just save the chart. You could save different things. Hopefully this all makes sense. This is how I have mine set up. One minute chart, five minute chart, uh, 15 minute chart, level two, time and sales. And there's my watch list over there. And there's my order window. So if you're day trading local small cap stocks or any stocks, this is a great way to have your chart set up. This is how I like it. Hopefully this helped you guys out. Thank you guys.